Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Namaste Village and the Namaste Experience. Yes, our wonderful Unity ministers are leaving us today. That's why I, I chose to wear the Unity shirt to honor them, knowing that they will return. It's not every Unity minister that gets a, a return invitation, so that, that means something. So this morning, I was thinking about an experience that I had quite a number of years ago that I wrote about in a very fun book called Love, God, and the Art of French Cooking. Yes. And the book is about my friendship with a, a man who lives outside of Toronto named Roger Dufault. Roger clearly is French. And, and he is a master chef. He's owned restaurants in Paris, in uh, other places in France, and in Toronto. So uh, when he and his wife bought this little B&B &B about an hour outside Chicago, he couldn't stop cooking because it's who he was. And you were, you were very blessed uh, if you got him to cook for you because it was not a, a normal thing. I remember a story once of, of, of when uh, J-Lo's, Jennifer Lopez's people called, and I guess they were doing something in the area and wanted to know if Roger would, would cook for them. Um, and he had no idea who J-Lo was. And he <laughs> says, I do not just cook for people. <laughs> and, and, and they tried to talk him into it, and he said, no, he can't. And when he, when he told his wife about it, she was like, what? <laughs> but he's, he is someone who, who lives this message through the, the food that he cooks. And I think that is a wonderful example because we all have a different expression or a different gift that we extend into the world. And yet the, the extension itself will always be the same, the extension of love, whether you're, you're extending love through cooking or through dance or through singing or, or just by the ordinary experience of being you. We've been talking about that a lot this week how important it is for all of us, if we really truly want to have this go deeper than just the surface, if we want to be in the experience, if we want to have the experience of being awake, we must give that which we have received. We have to become the source of this. And so that's what reminded me of Roger. I remember um, one of the first times that I was visiting him at their place, in Elora, for those of you who live near Toronto, beautiful town. Uh, I had just gone through a breakup and was, was trying to hold it together. And I, I used to sit in, in Roger's kitchen. There was a, a stool, and he would often cook breakfast or whatever, and, and, but he would share lessons with me that clearly showed his mastery, not just of cooking, but of being. So I thought I would read one little bit from this book, just because I opened it up and remembered this and thought it was fascinating. So I'm sitting there in the kitchen, and he's cooking up breakfast. He says, uh, and he, he's just now reached into a big uh, bag and grabbed a big handful of garlic. Most people say that it's best to cut the garlic in little slivers. They think it brings out the flavor. What they don't realize is that garlic has a very interesting quality. It heals itself after it's been cut, just like your finger would. Your finger wants to retain your blood. The garlic wants to retain its juice. You chop the garlic slowly, carefully, and by the time you put it on the fire, it's locked its juices inside. Let me show you a better way to do it. He separated two more cloves and smashed the flat end of the knife down with great force, destroying them both. Now it can't heal itself. And look, the juice is completely exposed and can really be tasted. He could tell by my look that 
I couldn't see the connection between my experience with Michelle and the proper way to prepare garlic. What I'm saying, he continued, is that your life is not meant to be slowly dissected. It's meant to be smashed. <laughs> then the juice inside you flows out and adds flavor to everything you touch. When you try to control the circumstances and the people around you, you're doing so out of fear. Don't give too much or you might be left with too little or that kind of thing. You stop the flow of life as soon as it starts. So you need to let go of the fear and let it spill out into the world like this garlic. Roger used, Roger used the knife to pick up the smashed bits as well as the juice and deposited it into the pan with the potatoes. A plume of steam rose when it hit the hot oil, and he lifted the pan and stirred it without the benefit of a utensil, tossing its content into the air in a flurry of color and fragrant aroma. Most people try to live an overly sanitized life, he continued, as if being clean and being pure are the same thing. He reached behind him and produced a bowl filled with discolored salt. This is sea salt. It isn't pure like, white, like the white salt that you probably use. It's a little brown and has little bits of earth mixed with it. It's so much better for you than anything else because the so-called impurities are what makes it healthy. He withdrew two more pinches of the salt and spread it evenly into the mix of potatoes and garlic. These are the things that make a great breakfast because they aren't perfect. The salt has some color in it. The garlic has been smashed so the juice flows and the vegetables haven't been cut uh, with precision by a machine. And then there's the love that blends it all together, making the most delicious hash browns. If we could live our lives in the same way, then most of our problems would vanish in an instant. Isn't that great? It just shows that truth is everywhere. Reality, love is everywhere. Whether you're cooking hash browns, whether you're writing a song, whether you're making whatever. In every moment we're called to, to deepen our relationship with the one. And then to express that, to live that, to give that. How simple is salvation? Just give it away. Let yourself be smashed. Love the impurities. Don't try and over sanitize or to do it the right way. There is no right. The only right way is the way of love. Love no matter what. And that isn't always the easy way, is it? We have to be willing to really give ourselves. So I'm also going to read a little bit from the Master Teacher Within because a little while ago I, I opened this book and, and I could see the relationship between what we just read in, in this. This is called An Imagined World. The separation you sense in the world is only in your mind. But because your mind is imbued with the energy that created it, you have the power to project what you believe into the world. Let's stop there for a moment. Your mind, the separation you sense is only in your mind. Now, are we talking about here? Are we talking about your brain? No. When we talk in this context about mind, okay, it, we're, we're, what we're talking about really is the reality and the truth of who and what you are forever undisturbed. Mind with a capital M. The mind that that fills the whole universe. Literally, this is who you are. You fill the whole universe, but what we try to do is to constrict it into mind with a small m. And then we associate it only with what we think, what we see, what we feel through this vehicle. Because that's all this is. This is a vehicle. It doesn't define me. It doesn't limit me. But I think it does. And so I, because I have within my whole mind 
the energy that created it, which is the creative energy of the universe, I can now create a whole world. And I can try to define how to live in that world, how to protect myself in that world, just like the garlic. To cut it in small, little, easy pieces so that I retain that which I believe myself to be, you see? So that I hold it in. But what does Roger say? Let it be, say, let it be smashed. Let your, let your everything just be smashed open and then come with holy empty hands unto God. Don't try and control your awakening, in other words. It's never going to work. You have no idea how to awaken because you're the one in your mind that, that wrapped a straitjacket around your reality so that you could be limited into this small little experience. You've, you've smashed, talk about being smashed, you've, been, you've smashed in everything so that you cannot know that which has always been known, that which, so that you can love that which is forever lovable. Let me read a little bit more. But you do not have the power to make the impossible real. And separation from love is impossible. That would mean that the world you think you see is impossible as well. That which you interpret. We're not talking about a garden or the world that we... We're talking about the world that you interpret, that you believe in. This is the easiest way for you to understand the truth your whole mind knows to be true. The world you seem to see cannot be truly seen, but it can be imagined. You can imagine whatever you choose. The escape from this way of not seeing is simple. Choose to see what God sees instead of what you assert to be real. Then reality itself will collapse time and you'll find yourself, with a capital S, where you have always been. You will find yourself, your reality, where you've always been. If you remember yesterday, we started with a line that I'm going to get my phone out so I can read it to you again. It's basically this, the, the beginning of, of the whole issue, the whole problem. It said, stop chasing after everything and allow everything to come to you naturally. You see, it's once again how we separate it. That's a beautiful way of looking at it, the word everything, everything. The whole thing, all reality. No, let's separate them and search for everything. That's the problem. Because we're trying to identify what it should be, what thing it should be now, instead of it's everything now, in every moment. Let it be that simple. And as we keep saying, as soon as that experience begins to awaken within you, give it away. Don't hold on to it. I've, I've used this analogy uh, or little story before, but I just love it, so I'll use it again. Uh, Dorothy Day. Many uh, of you may know who Dorothy was. Uh, Dorothy was the co-founder of a, a movement that started back in the 1930s called the Catholic Worker Movement. Uh, I, I lived in a Catholic worker community in Chicago for a couple of years, way back in the early 90s. And in fact, three of them um, from there just called me yesterday to say hi. But Dorothy uh, used to say, in, in case you're wondering what the Catholic worker movement is, the easiest way to describe it is that it's the far left wing of the Catholic Church. Very social justice minded, working with the poor. And... Uh, Dorothy was an example of someone who gave everything. She didn't separate it to everything. She gave everything. And she used to say, let's say I'm in New York and I need to get to Chicago. And I, I only have $20, but the, uh, the ticket costs $100. What am I to do? She said, I'm to give away that, that $20 to someone who needs it more than me and go to God and say, 
God, I need $100, so I'm just going to give this $20 away. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Usually we would say, okay, well, let's keep the 20 and try and get 80 more. That's not what Dorothy's saying. So now, suddenly, let's say $50 just comes into her, her life magically. She goes back to God and said, I think I told you I need $100. So I'm going to find someone who needs this 50 more than me, and I'm going to give it to them because I need 100 Now let's say $80 just is given to her out of nowhere. Once again... She goes to God and, and says, I need $100. I'm going to give this 80 away. And then suddenly the, the whole thing arrives. Isn't that a beautiful story? It makes no sense logically, but neither does love, really. I mean, true, unconditional love. It doesn't really make sense to give everything to everything. But that's what love is. That's what we do, and that's what awakens this reality within us. That's what the smashing of the garlic is. Don't hold back. Don't try and hold the juice in. Let the juice just fly in every direction, and you'll make the greatest hash browns you've ever made in your life. All right, someone else who knows a lot about cooking is our dear sister Vicky. So I'm going to bring her on as well. Vicky, do you like that analogy that Roger shared with us? Oh, I love it, Brother James, because that's I, I never had a way of describing my style. I'm not a fancy chef, you know, but I, you know, I'm more of a cowboy cook or a little, you know, I'm an impressionist. I'm an impressionistic liver. And I, I live impressionistically. I cook impressionistically. It's what he describes as smashing the garlic. And so that gave me a nice handle to work with because I just see or I feel whatever it is I think I'm supposed to do, whether it's cook a meal or go and do something somewhere else. And I get the sense of it, the feel of it. And I take whatever's there and throw it in the pot and never slice it up too neatly or anything, kind of smash it and throw it in. Because it's like, for me, it's like everything wants to mingle. Everything wants to juice up together. So that's how I look at life. I just kind of see it that way. So I'll jump into something wholeheartedly just the way I'll throw whatever ingredients I have in a pot. I'll just jump in because the only thing I know is I'll jump in with love. I'll hold wholeheartedly just jump in with love. When I started to take kids, I didn't take one kid, I took 12 kids the first day. And I said, well, I'm gonna do kids, I might as well do them all, do as many as I can. For those of you and who don't know what she's talking about, Vicki had a huge, huge house and she, it, she turned it into a dorm basically for international students living in Boston. So you'd have what, as many as 15 kids living there with you and cooking for them every day, 20. Yeah, I, we had generally 20. I was there with her many times, and you've never seen a, a, a more well-behaved group of, of young adults in your life because of what she's describing right now. So sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, it's great because I never had rules with the kids. I just, I just welcomed them and loved them, told them to love each other, take care of each other, make your bed. Most I, the biggest rule was leave no tracks. That's a Native American thing. Leave no tracks. Don't leave a mess behind you. Leave no tracks and love each other. The rest will take care of itself. No curfews, no keys, no nothing. And it did for 20 years. We did always have 10 to, 10 to 20 kids or more. We could hold 24, I guess. Anyway, um, that whole idea of living impressionistically is the um, taking lightly the appearances. It's a way of seeing. So I wouldn't be bothered with what people say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Just like with COVID, ah, what, I'm not worried about, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Ah, I got time to rest, so let me see what it's really about. So I throw myself into it by loving everything. I read a nice quote by Eckhart Tolle the other day. If you're not accepting everything as it is, enjoying everything as it is, and enthusiastic about everything as it is, you're not in the now. It's really simple. And when you are enthusiastic and you accept what is, there's nothing but throw yourself into it and, and just 
accept and love it all and throw it all up in the air and see how it falls down, falls out, how it spins. So that's been, and I ran the restaurants that way too. It just, just pull everything into it. Anyway, today I had a good experience and this is, and I thought of it this morning on the thread of yesterday about, um, don't worry about everything, every little thing, when what we're being given is everything. The love that we are is the everything. So I'm feeling better. Maybe you can tell. I feel better. And there's a big family wedding tomorrow that's 300 miles away. And I said, well, I feel better. I can get in the car. I can drive. I go to the wedding. I'm good. And I tested negative for COVID last night. I said, I can go to the wedding. And then I did my morning little, one of my morning practices. I have this picture of Jesus and it lights up which is kind of fun. So I light it up every morning and I do that prayer I taught my son. You know, dear God, this is your day. You show me your way. What miracles do you want to do through me today? And I said, but I'd really like to go to the wedding. What do you think? Should we go to the wedding? What do you think? I'm ready. I feel good. I haven't got a fever. I'm good. And I said, you know, this is a good example. This is the thing that I've carved out big family wedding. I want to go and see those grandchildren of mine march down the aisle in their little outfits and everything. And I said, but you know, I really want to know what's the bigger plan. And I'm not going to figure it out. I'm just going to let it be. And I did. I said, I really want, I want, thy will be done. Another way of saying surrender, surrender, Dorothy, thy will be done. Here I am. So I lit up my my Jesus and said, you know, Jesus, I really trust in you. Thanks for everything. And later I sat and meditated. And I was about to write my son a note. I'm getting in the car, Teddy. I'm all set. I'm good. I'm feeling great. And I didn't do it. And I said, oh, now there's the impression again. I got an impression of just wait a minute. And then I just sat down and I did a little morning meditation. And that whole experience, that theme of everything, do I want to have every little thing the way I think it belongs? Or do I want everything? And I love the everything. I love living in that everything. Because there's no worries, no concerns, no cares. It's big relief. It's, the, it's what easy does it is. Not the sweat of your brow. It's like, go with the flow. So I meditated and I got up and I laughed and I had started that text to Teddy. I went to the phone and erased it and said, who knows why, but I got the impression, just stay where you are. So I'm not going because I got the everything. I got the fulfillment, the little everything, going to a wedding, seeing everybody, all that stuff was this was was the idea of love and it is love it would great be great but the everything was that context of wholeness that it doesn't depend on any one little thing there's no one little thing you can give or take away that changes the everything and the peace and the love when we rest into that one place that one center within ourselves and we look there for direction, for answers, for openings, for whatever. And that's what I did. So I didn't go. I'm not going. Stay in foot. And I'm filled with the, with the peace. And today's lesson, I feel the love of God within me now. And I do feel the love of God within me now. And I don't need a reason to go or not to go. And that's my, what I've noticed and I know. My answer to everything, oh, did you get the shot? Did you take the medicine? Did you this? Did you that? I don't know. I just go by the peace of God is shining in me now. What is that? Where does that lead me? Where's that prompt? And it's an impression that either says yes or no, go or stay. It's very simple. I don't hear voices. I don't hear Holy Spirit talking to me in some vocal. I, I can't do any of that but I know the impression of the peace of God is shining in me now and I never want to disrupt it. I want to go with it. And if that says stay where you are, well, I stay where I am. And <laughs> that's my experience of thing or everything. 
So thanks, Brother James. <laughs> and uh, thanks for all those examples. And it is easier to live life that way because then you're never missing an ingredient. Everything, every ingredient you ever need to whatever you're cooking or cooking up in life is always there. You just figure I've always got what I need. Just use what I have because the everything supplies what's really needed. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Hey, Vicki, how familiar are, are you with the, uh, the, the, the late 70s punk band, The Clash? Oh, James. <laughs> if I don't know Aerosmith, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to tell that story. That's a funny story. Uh, so Vicki calls me up one day, and um, I'm, I'm on the phone. She's in her car, and um, her son Teddy was, was pretty, pretty young at that time. And he was playing at a friend's house, and Vicky was was picking him up. She said, "I have to go. Um, I, I'm I'm at the house now." So um, I said, "Oh, okay." And she said, "Yeah, the 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 people. I, I guess the guy's a, a musician. I don't know anything about him." I said, "Is it someone I might know?" Uh, she said, "Well, his name is Steven Tyler." <laughs> You're at Steven Tyler's house, and you have no idea who that is. No, that's Vicky. So no, I, I know that you don't know who the Clash is, but 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 you but you might know these lines: Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble. See, this is what this is the conversation we have with the Holy Spirit: Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble, but if I stay, it will be double. So you've got to let me know, everybody. Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> oh, Vicky, thank you so much. Don't turn them off. Nope. I, just to remind everybody who is um, is with us uh, on Zoom, uh, Scott is going to be staying on, and he is going to uh, oh, Flash remove back spotlight. spotlight. Wait, I've only got Vicky on the screen now. Oh, there we go. Yes, Flashback Friday. He's going to go in the other room, and he is going to uh, continue this conversation to kind of wrap up the week. But the rest of us, what a blessing. What a joy. You know, have a beautiful weekend. But, and just remember, give it away. Give everything away. Give it away. Give it away, give it away now. Don't give everything away. Give everything away. It's the surest way to know that everything is already yours. So we say together, Amen. 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 Have a great day. We love you. You too. Love you. I, I love you all. <laughs>